three kinds of understanding. There's the understanding that comes from listening, the understanding that comes from thinking, and the understanding that comes from meditating, from developing the mind. The first kind of understanding is obviously the most shallow, the three. You listen to something, and something that wasn't clear before suddenly makes sense. You can figure it out. And it's an important part of the practice, learning how to, how to listen so you come to an understanding through listening. But you can't stop there. You've got to think things through as well. That's the second level of understanding. You take the various things you've listened to and try to figure out how they fit in with one another. Sort them out, which teachings seem to have more weight than other ones. Work out the implications. But both the understanding that comes from listening and the understanding that comes from thinking things through can lead you astray. I mean, something may sound very clear and make a lot of sense, but it simply is not true. It doesn't work. The same with the things you think through. Once you start dealing in abstractions, your abstractions can take you in all kinds of directions, which is why you need a third kind of understanding, the third understanding that comes from developing the mind. In other words, instead of dealing with concepts, you're actually dealing with qualities of the mind itself. On the level of listening and thinking, you can hear about mindfulness, you can hear about alertness, you can hear about concentration and discernment. But it's when you actually try to develop these things in the mind, you come up against issues you might not have thought of before, things that weren't in the in the plan. Then you find that as you develop them, if you develop just one quality or two qualities, this usually doesn't work. The mind gets one-sided. That's why you notice that when the Buddha talks about his most important teachings, they come in lists, a list of four, a list of five, seven, eight. You've got to develop lots of qualities and figure out some way to bring them into balance. So it's a practical skill, it's a doing, rather than just a thinking and a listening. The word bhavana for meditation literally means developing. It's something you do. And it's more hands-on. How do you develop alertness? How do you develop mindfulness? How do you develop concentration? You run into practical problems. And it's working through those practical problems that you come to a real understanding. Now it's true that the insights you gain in, in the course of meditation, in the course of developing mind, the mind, need guidance from what you've learned by listening and thinking things through. Because it's possible that meditation can lead you astray, too. You get focused on one thing and just run with it. Notice when I was staying with the John Lee, sometimes I'd come across something that sounded like the answer to everything, and I was just going to run with that and nothing else. And he'd always find jobs for me to do when I seemed to get in that state. cleaning something out, working on this, working on that. Of course, it was interfering with that particular type of meditation, and often I'd end up dropping it. And it felt frustrating. Why was it that it seemed I was finally ca catching on to something, and he'd seem to be standing in the way? Well, he seemed to sense when I was getting too one-sided in the practice. So it's good to remember as we're meditating, there are eight factors to this path we're working on. Awakening requires seven factors. There are four noble truths, four frames of reference, five strengths. And you've got to learn how to develop all of them in a balanced way. 
and in the process of keeping that balance, that's when you really learn a lot of interesting things that you never hear or you would never think about, because they're known only through a hands-on approach. It's like the difference they, you, distinction they used to make between scribe knowledge and warrior knowledge. Scribes know all the names for things and describe them. Warriors know how to do certain things, but they may not be able to describe them. But they know what works in a particular situation. They have to know what works, otherwise they die. And they may learn that some unexpected things work in specific situations. It's basically a warrior's knowledge is learning to read the situation, see what's needed. And if you don't have any background knowledge or any ready-made knowledge for something, you learn how to cook it up, how to develop it. When you're sitting and meditating, it's not a matter of remembering everything you read in the books. It's seeing the problem and trying to figure it out from what you've got. And sometimes the solutions fall right in line with the text, and sometimes they're a little outside of the line of the text, but if they work, they're fine. But you can't know this kind of thing unless you really work with developing the mind. And to get away from all the thoughts that come from listening and thinking, this is why I work with the breath, get things grounded in the body. Don't think of the body as an inconvenient thing that's getting in the way of your focusing on the mind. If you really want to understand what's going on in the mind, you have to deal with your awareness of the body. It's a huge area of the mind. And the interplay between the mind and the body will teach you an awful lot of interesting things as you work with it. So as you work on developing the the breath element in the body, you work on developing mindfulness and alertness and concentration around that. You learn a lot of things about the mind that you wouldn't have learned otherwise. You learn to pull yourself out of your knowledge that comes from listening and thinking and reading. And get a knowledge that comes from actually working with the things in and of themselves, not just the idea of mindfulness or the idea of concentration, but the actual experience of mindfulness, the experience of concentration. And it's through this kind of understanding that you can really open things up in the mind. You actually see how the mind is causing itself suffering. It's, it's not a theoretical proposition. You can understand it on the level of theory. You can listen to it, as John Lee once said. If our insight were simply a matter of things that you listen to, he could explain it all within three hours, less than three hours. But he says for actually mastering at least maybe just one of these principles, five years might not be enough, because it's a different kind of knowledge. knowledge that doesn't deal in words and abstractions, but deals in the actual events in the mind. So this is why we focus in the present moment, is to see, see these events in the mind as they're happening. And so now we're not playing around with their shadows, arranging their shadows in interesting patterns. Actually, we're dealing with the events as they happen in the mind, the qualities as they develop in the mind. And that takes the understanding to a whole new dimension.